Demon Slayer, Season 4, Episode 8. Maybe we'll get another walking music video. <laughs> Here it is. It's happening. Eight minutes total of Muzan walking, but he does it so stylishly. Oh yeah, zoomy camera. <laughs> I don't really like tripling, quadrupling down on this, this walk up. I kind of love it. The worse it gets, the better it gets. All jokes aside, it is horrifying. He's just in your garden. Uzan is in the garden. Which effects do you want from Uzan's entrance? Yes! Hurry up! <laughs> Go, move! Walk a little faster. Somebody get behind and push. Part of me hopes this is the whole episode. It's just like a 20, 23 minute cool walking montage. This episode is 40 minutes long? <laughs> okay, well I think I know where those extra minutes went. Yo, what's up? We finally meet. Look at you all sick and stuff. Not like me and my strong, healthy, handsome body. Haha, <laughs> you're sick. <laughs> Not like me and my glorious, healthy, beautiful body. Final episode? What? No one told me. <laughs> what is it? Hashra Unite. I think I've accidentally said that exact phrase like a dozen times in the season. I didn't know this was the season finale. It all feels so sudden. Can't see him. He's shockingly good looking and well dressed. A thousand years, man. It's not just stunning for Ubayashiki, it's stunning for Muzan, who's probably been aware of their presence for quite some time. It's a long time to wait for stuff. Ubayashiki has not waited a thousand years. He's inherited a lineage that's waited for a thousand years. Muzan has waited a thousand years. What must it feel like walking in here after all this time? Ew, you're like in bed and ill, not like me and my glorious body. Things to do. Purpose mission, yeah. I don't know if this is actually true, but I've heard that typically with very long married couples, if one of the spouses passes away, it's very common for the second spouse to die within the following year, which you might think is loss of purpose on a less morbid but related note. I've also heard that people who feel they have unfinished work or are working on big things tend to live longer. I don't think there are many greater purposes you could imagine than defeating Muzan, and there's still so much work to be done. Also, my vet told us that my dog would be dead within a month, and it's been like a year and a half, two years. My dog has a single-minded desire to eat biscuits. You're talking a lot. Probably wants to enjoy it. Don't. Okay, okay. Don't play your hand. Oh, what? We're family. Is it the same disease? If that is true, if there is a connection there with the illness, huge contrast in what the two of them each did with it. One let his body go for higher ideals, service, sort of accepting the inevitability of a natural lifespan and having a vision of a future that involves more than just oneself, Muzan of course being the opposite. One also being much more naturally inspiring than the other. Very directly that, yeah. It's really, really cool, really interesting. Wow, wow. That's such a crazy thing to be born into. Imagine trying to come to terms with that. All the unfairness that, that carries. And then trying to do good despite it, despite how easy it would be to just curse your luck and curse your lineage and your family, to become selfish, to see yourself as just a victim of fate and live in bitterness. It reminds me a lot of the, the early Tekken games with the devil gene, which I think is actually a really cool idea. There's no such thing as a devil gene, right? But there's certain things in my family I feel like I've identified as a parallel for which that's a metaphor. We're like, wow, this is a trait that a lot of us share. It's not necessarily good. But what's really cool about the way it plays out, at least in the early games, is like you have it and it could just become the devil. It's so alluring. Like, there's so much power in it. It feels great to just lean in to your dark desires. But there's an even cooler level where you figure it out and you kind of break the cycle, break free of it, which doesn't mean you eliminate it. It means you understand it and you understand its dangers and you're wary of it and you have a vow to not fall victim to it. And instead, it ends up becoming a tool that you can use at will for things that 
feel good, that maybe are good, that are not just for yourself. And in doing so, though this is kind of crazy to say and hard to explain, you can heal your bloodline. And I think everyone, for the most part, in some way has this battle where you can't escape from your your ancestry, whether it's genetic ancestry or just behavioral patterns that you've inherited. But you can be the one to figure it out. Or just the next iteration of the chain of progress that was started by people before you. <laughs> Okay. It's almost embarrassing for him. That's a very simple way of looking at it. I think as a viewer watching, you almost, you could make a very strong argument, I think, an instinctive argument that Utsubuyashi has already won. The Muzan's punishment is just being Muzan. I want to walk in the sun. I want to go to the beach. Oh, something's getting in. I wouldn't even count Utsubayashi out completely yet. This could all be a gambit. I want you to stand over there and be really creepy when Muzan comes in. Come home. I mean, it feels like he's already made peace. He obviously cares less about his life than other things. I don't even think that's how he meant it. I mean, it, it works on multiple levels. I, I have a vague sense of where he's going with this. Uh, yeah. They're playing at different scales. Again, this is very free rent. I mean, it's very easy to understand Muzan wanting to be remembered, wanting to have a, a visible, tangible legacy to experience glory. I mean, a lot of it is wanting to receive attention and value while one is alive. It's like thinking about being praised and loved far beyond your lifespan. It's something that brings us utility now, but there are much bigger and more important things than like your personal glory, which is something like all life and all of your children's lives. And even if there's no genetic component between you and anyone that comes after you, you share a human DNA or an ideological DNA or just a DNA DNA of where we fit in the animal kingdom and the world and existence. And you actually have a legacy whether you like it or not. There is no timeline that isn't affected by you. And with that as your highest vision, rather than, you know, personal attention and wanting to feel loved and wanting to feel superior to others, there's a little bit more clear of a track where you want to do your best. You have this moment, you have this opportunity where you actually are a part of things and making choices. Like you sort of have to honor that to make any sort of peace with it. I don't even think it's important to be perfect. I don't think it's possible to be perfect, although you can strive for it. I mean, yeah, live your life as a flesh and blood human and experience experience the, the joys and, and pleasures and sadness and everything that comes with that. But also keep in mind the bigger picture. Like you just do your best, you know? You don't do things that feel terrible. Don't let yourself get defeated by things that don't matter. Don't get cynical because in a very limited way of looking at things, you're small. Don't make that mistake. And just put forth your best effort towards something that you identified as something that is good and something that you actually are well suited in which to give. And then no one can take anything away from you. I'm saying this sort of flippantly, it's it's not something that's easy. It's a very difficult state to attain. It's probably a lifetime of work. But just imagining this as a hypothetical, if you actually could get there and you really could feel how profound that is, what the hell does it matter if Muzan comes in and kills you? I mean, I mean basic life concerns and considerations aside, there's something about that that nobody can touch. Tell me. Maybe he'll get it someday. Maybe he'll get it when he meets Tanjiro. <laughs> I think about Rengoku, for example. Rengoku's still alive. Oof. Wow. Scathing. Not looking so weak now. Whoa, this is such a cool shot. Oh, this is so cool. All of them. And they're part of that long lineage. I thought that's how it would feel. It explains why he's so unafraid. Oh, 
Maybe you can, I don't know. It's a lot to ask, but. Oh, that's interesting too. That got in. Oh, you just showed weakness. Oh, you're just that. Now it's, you're, it's over for you. You lost. You lost to the sick dude. His body's not even attractive. And here you are. <laughs> Getting owned. You came in here with your nice cloak and good shoes and beautiful hair. And you're the ugly one. The legacy thing that you're speaking about and that I was trying to get at, you can look at it from the other side too. I mean, do you want to be the one? Do you want to be the one that's like against it? That is maybe what people mean by by hell, you know? If there is an eternity to the ripple effect of one's life and choices, let's say you live your life full of evil and die, there are no more choices. You're just in the book forever in a static state of having been terrible, being like anti-beauty. Also interesting in this, on a less metaphysical level and very flesh and blood, humanity will continue, demons will die. It's very fragile. And eventually humans will die too, right? But it seems a lot more enduring and contributory than this sort of like Independence Day, kill the queen or king, all of you and all of your kind gets wiped out permanently type thing. Mm. This is so much better than anything I expected or hoped for. I was thinking like a battle, but it's way better than that. He won this psychologically. There's no need for a combat. I'll leave that to my homies. Hmm, I wonder if Buzan will amend his ways. <laughs> Or he'll reject it and kill him. Big mystery. Well, I guess the training has ended. I, I don't know. I thought this arc was going to be a lot longer. There's a lot more training coming. Yeah, but also, I don't know. It's still really dangerous. Don't un underestimate. What is this cut? He knows the risks. Universal loyalty. And it makes sense. I have so much more appreciation for his character now. I don't think we've really seen that much of his leadership or his substance, but it's very clear now. It's also his wife and kids. It reminds me of something in Hunter x Hunter with uh, the Hell's Gungi. You're not the one making the choices. You're not the one moving the pieces. You're reacting. You haven't figured out the real game yet. Crazily, this is something he's foreseen and has accepted and planned for. Yet, Muzan, almost knowing that, can't help himself. At least I learned to love him before he died. Oh. That was so much more. He was just hit with so much more than a shockwave. Get mad, but also stay calm. Tundra would smell that very vividly. Oh my god. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, it's Muzan. Oh god, that would have been horrific. <laughs> I, was wishy. I was so lost for a second there. You couldn't destroy it. You couldn't beat it. Admittedly, the two children thing kind of bothers me a little bit. Yeah, you can't begin to understand. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was so lost in so many ways. Ubiashiki did that. I thought it was Muzan losing control. He underestimated what he'd be willing to risk and lose. Final gift to the Hashira. Is that right, or is this, is that just Muzan's lens? Could be, but from what I think that exposes about Ubeishiki, I don't think there was really a deep hatred. I think he was beyond that. And even Muzan referenced his Buddha-like face. Here's a crazy idea. He might have even had sympathy for Muzan, or if not sympathy, at least pity, because he's able to see him from a bird's eye view and in, in x-ray vision and sees that there's really nothing. There is no ideological threat to Muzan, just a physical one. <laughs> I think they have to have willingly taken part for it to be okay. Not your normal family. That looks highly effective. That's tough, yeah. That's a great idea. God, the Hotshirt are taking forever. They're getting here at Muzan walking speed. Come on. 
for you. Whoa, it's hers personally attacking him. This is the result of her research. おお。そんなことが分かっていれば私は鬼になどならなかった。あ、しっとりは、ま、ショルソ。そのもう全人間を殺していたが。あ、しなんイネセント。もしすよな、なんでイメークスワチュリフォーギブボ。バチスユナウ
They clearly loved making this. I, I could also sort of appreciate now why they put so much energy into this place for so long. It was gonna end here. It's also a very final dungeon with like the platforms. Focusing straight straight on Tanjiro. As soon as I get my footing. On a first name basis. Just as I, as soon as I find solid ground. No! <laughs> now? What a cliffhanger. Oh yeah, definitely feels like we're gearing up into the last season. Season 4 ends with us entering the final dungeon. Great ending credit scene. Yeah! Oh, good! That's great. Oh, Tanjiro making his move in the Taisho Era secret. Obviously. It's no secret. That wasn't a secret, that was just flirting. Yeah, I was thinking. She lo lo loved him. Yeah, there definitely was passion somewhere. Yeah, let's talk about Rengoku. I like it. He's still alive. Did you guys eat pancakes together? Oh, there he is. Third wheel and much? <laughs> right, everyone, everyone is going to jump in here. I feel like a little kid. <laughs> he gets to live in the Taisha Earth secret. That was my favorite Taisha Earth secret ever that I can remember with my limited memory. They really used the otherworldly fourth wall breaking feature of that to its maximum advantage. It feels very fitting. I mean, Rengoku's presence is so clearly felt seasons after his death. Speaking of the eternity that was brought up in this episode, Rengoku is a great example of that. And he's still alive in a very tangible way for basically everyone, but we've seen it best through Tanjiro. I think that sort of thing exists even after you lose track of it. You know, things sort of spread out, sort of how the names of your ancestors get lost as their lineage splits out into the future. The names get diluted, but the reality of their existence and their gifts to the world are, are like very real. So, I mean, Rogoku won't be remembered in this way by name forever, but that doesn't diminish the reality of his existence or contribution. I really loved this episode. It's something I know Demon Slayer to be capable of. I feel like it really explicitly delivered its overall theme and take in a way that was really moving and satisfying. A lot of the episode, long walk aside, was their conversation, but it ended up being one of the most riveting moments of the season for me, really tying this arc and its, its thematic and story significance to the broader whole. And then just on a pure, you know, show story level, it's moving on in the flesh here in your home taking you to his home with all of us everyone we know everyone who's trained everyone for whom this means so much united together in what is a battle for not only humanity but light and dark in essence on the animation action side yomei just being amazing just phenomenally cool being a good child and now we begin the long wait for i i think crazy it is to say the the final season but thank you to everybody for watching and supporting the demon slayer season four reactions huge thank you to my patrons for making this and every video possible love all of you guys and see you soon for season five of demon slayer or whatever else <laughs>